Minecraft's one of those games that makes you go, oh! It's very open-ended, letting you do what you want, when you want. Your experience is unique and personal to you, which kind of makes this a difficult game for me to review. It's very subjective, with a nearly limitless number of things to do. You can actually play Minecraft within Minecraft. All this being said, there are core gameplay loops and other internal mechanisms guiding the average playthrough of this game from start to finish. So I figured we could analyse that to understand how Minecraft has inspired an entire generation of gaming. Because this is the most significant sandbox you'll ever set foot in. The clearest and most foundational game mechanics are right there in the title. You mine, and then craft. The vast majority of the world is destructible, so that when you break something, you can receive it as an item drop. This is Corsta. This is the mining function of the game and serves as your primary method for interacting with the environment. It's an immediate and self-evident way of learning about the game that's so direct. What is that like? That is shroom light. Anyone can enjoy it. Within seconds, Kanzi knew exactly how to move in Minecraft. Break. Oh my god, he might do it. Break. Kanzi can do it. Break. And more importantly, form the same conclusions from it. Oh, I thought I could convert this back into mm -hmm. the war. I guess not. For example, dirt is quick to mine and can be quickly harvested as a resource. Stone, on the other hand, takes much longer to mine and won't drop anything if broken by hand. What? This is evidently less satisfying, investing more of an effort without reward, and so it sparks a natural curiosity where we ask ourselves simple, honest questions like, can we do this quicker? And is stone even obtainable? At its core, Minecraft is a sandbox game. The earliest versions were far more simplistic and also more barren. With fewer distractions, a greater emphasis is put on its main gameplay loop, breaking and placing blocks. Even the more primitive versions of this game have managed to retain a modest and loyal player base of which clearly demonstrates robust and enduring game design. Giving the players complete freedom to enjoy a game however they like is often understated and overlooked. The evolution of Minecraft video suggests that Notch wanted to make the game feel more alive and inhabited, Perhaps his early concerns were that players would quickly grow bored with what Minecraft had to offer and move on to something more interesting. He was wrong. But that didn't stop him from making the game even better. We need to have exploding arrows. They're actually kind of fun. Once you've gathered enough stuff, you want to open your inventory and observe the little window in the top right corner. It's here that you can place your harvested resources to discover different things that you can make from what you found. This is the crafting function of the game and serves to expand upon our limitations. Notch needed a way to add more depth to the overall experience, a gameplay element that could run parallel to our mining and exploration of his world, providing further purpose to our actions. It's human instinct to process and refine the naturally occurring resources of a world into something more effective and useful. Under normal circumstances, I would be making some armor right now. However, this guy is here and uh, I want him. Boom. We have a pet. Conceptually, crafting provided the means for progression, but without a prompt or obvious reasoning, it wasn't yet embedded into the DNA of the game. The creative mode of Minecraft demonstrates this very well. Think to yourself, when was the last time you ever wanted to craft something in creative mode? Most of you may not even realize crafting is fully supported and available here too. What this game mode lacks is the reasoning behind its use. Crafting here isn't intrinsically linked to Minecraft's core gameplay loop of breaking and placing blocks. Every item in the game is easily accessible from the creative menu of this mode, and so there's much less of a reason for wanting to craft anything at all, let alone a purpose to it. <laughs> Despite being the game's original mode, creative always felt secondary to what I believe truly characterized and captivated my generation of video gamers. Minecraft starts you off with nothing, no dialogue, no characters, no story, just, and you're ready to go. This game uses contextual prompts to guide the player, like cause and effect. A big change to the world happens on your first night when monsters like zombies and skeletons emerge to threaten the player. If you're unprepared, your character will likely die. No. And you'll have to restart all over again from the beginning. 
This is your first major consequence and identifies to the player what playing the game wrong feels like. I'm dead. Yo! Everyone's first experience of this game starts with a That's so depressing. No. And then everything preceding this is purpose to avoid suffering the same fate. There's always been cause for debate on what the end goal of playing Minecraft truly is. Nowadays you have bosses and other distractions that help shape the overall experience of the game, but as long as you're avoiding this screen, you're doing well. Understanding purpose in this way also helps us to explain why people that have invested countless of hours into building masterpiece survival worlds eventually grow bored and stop playing. They finally attain their goals, creating their ideal homes and obtaining the means to efficiently explore every facet of this world. However, the further they get from risking this fate, the more their purpose has been fulfilled and therefore, they'll be less motivated to continue playing. It's a really interesting relationship that justifies purpose and, in many ways, Minecraft is just a reflection of that which we contain within ourselves. It's a blank canvas, ready to be imbibed with all of our passions, and I think, collectively, it's become a really pure artistic representation for the millions of gamers across the world that have inhabited its blocky landscape. There are very few video games that manage to ascend to this level of reception across a global scale, becoming almost culturally significant, and I believe that it will be for a very long time cemented in gaming history as a cornerstone for the industry, inspiring innumerable passion projects and other cloned imitations of its great work. But together, let's never allow ourselves to forget the simple and honest truth that Minecraft is really just a clone of Infinity Miner.